Hello students, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is our first lecture and uh, we are going to start uh, second year English compulsory. So the first, before starting the first lesson, uh, let me tell you a few tips about reading. Uh, the first thing that uh, we do when we start reading the text is that uh, we overview the text. And uh, whenever you are overviewing uh, an essay or a story or uh, a chapter of the book, the basic thing or the first and foremost thing that we come across is the title or headings in the text. So it's better to spare a few seconds to understand the title of the text or the title topic uh, of the uh, chapter before starting uh, reading the text. For instance, here we have uh, the title Sirat i Tayyibah and the Muslim Youth. So in this title, we have two expressions, or we can say uh, two phrases, Sirat i Tayyibah and the Muslim youth. First, let us guess and spare some time. Uh, let's say a few seconds, uh, maybe 20 or 30 seconds to anticipate, to guess what could be in the text or what can we come across, what can we expect in this reading. For instance, the word Sirat means life, right? Okay, and whenever uh, we uh, read the word Tayyiba with Sirat, so uh, definitely we start thinking about the life of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we can guess that there is something about uh, the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this text. And we would study that what it is about. Now, the second phrase that we have is uh, the Muslim youth. So when you think about uh, this expression or this phrase, Muslim youth, so you would understand that this is something related to our life because you are teenagers, okay, and you are in your uh, young age. So it may be related to you as well. So when we combine the two expressions, so we get an idea that there is something or some instructions, some injunctions, some uh, teachings from the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which are relevant to our life, particularly uh, in this phase of the, the phase of life we are living, that is young age. So now having an idea we can start reading. But let me explain the rationale that why did we uh, do so? Uh, why did we think about the title? Remember, when you start thinking about the title before starting reading, so you basically uh, develop a, a kind of question in your mind or you start thinking about, you uh, start uh, asking yourself some questions. For example, what could be there in this text, right? Uh, uh, if you can think of uh, WH questions like what, who, when, where, why. So when you raise these questions in your mind, so it helps you in understanding the text. That's why it's always uh, helpful and rather it's better to raise questions before starting the text are new lesson. So now, having been done with this, uh, we start the reading, right? There is indeed a good model for you in the messenger of Allah, for the one who has hope in Allah and the last day, and who remembers Allah profusely. Now, within the parenthesis, you have the reference Okay, of this quote, the quote that you have. So basically, this is a verse from Quran, Surah Azab. Okay, this is verse number 21. So it says that Prophet Muhammad's life is a role model for us. 
and for everyone. And the people who can follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu life as a role model uh, would be characterized with three basic qualities, right? Which are uh, mentioned in this verse. So the first quality or the first characteristic that they would have is that they would have hope in Allah. They would believe in Allah, right? And the last day, the last day means doomsday. So they would believe in the doomsday as well, that they would have believed that everything is to vanish. Okay, so we would die, everything would be uh, finished, okay, at the end of day. So, and this belief that there is a God and then everything is going to vanish, everything is going to finish, will actually makes you responsible. Okay, it makes you think about your own uh, self. And the third quality that we uh, see in this verse is who remembers Allah profusely. I mean, they remember Almighty Allah, okay, in abundance. Profusely actually means uh, abundantly, too much, okay, in great abundance, in great uh, number. So remembering Allah, uh, maybe uh, it may refer to different kind of things. It's not only related to just doing zikr, okay. Uh, it could be like uh, learning about Islam, okay, learning about Sharia and uh, reading Quran, okay, offering prayer and all other rituals that uh, we uh, are bound to do. So all, th all things are included in this verse, okay, in the third quality. So now it's basically like uh, if you see that all the people who have these qualities are mostly, okay, they, they, we as Muslims, we also believe in uh, Almighty Allah, okay, we believe in uh, the doomsday, okay, and then uh, people, most of the Muslims, okay, they, they offer prayers, they, they actually uh, recite the Holy Quran, okay, and they do azkar. So all things that are, uh, these things are basically related to the Muslims, uh, rituals and practices and their belief system. Okay, so now uh, the text also explains this, that in this Quranic verse, Allah Almighty has declared Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu to be the loftiest example to follow. No, loftiest example means greatest example. Okay, the ultimate supreme example. Lofty means something ex exalted in dignity, something eminent, something uh, sublime. So Prophet Muhammad is li uh, life is flawless. Right, so another thing that we can relate to this thing is that uh, if you uh, study the life, lives of different people, uh, historical personalities and our celebrities, okay, you would come to know that there is no person whose complete life has been recorded authentically, okay, and uh, you know, we can say that this is, the, uh, uh, we have the authentic record of each and every uh, detail of that person's life, okay. So, for instance, you take any political uh, personality, okay, a leader or any general, okay, any scholar, any philosopher, there may, be, there must be something missing in his life, okay, or uh, even if we have a, a great record of his life or about his life, so still there would be details that uh, are missing in the record of his life are in his biographies, okay, people may not know complete uh, details of that person's life. That's why we cannot confidently say that that person's complete life has been recorded. On the other hand, if you think about Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu life and if you read it, so you would realize that every detail 
of his life has been recorded so carefully that uh, you cannot say that something is missing or something is not mentioned there in the in the uh, life of prophet muhammad uh, recording or in history why is it so because we have three different sources of his life the first and foremost and the most authentic source is quran itself so first we analyze quran okay and whatever has been mentioned in the quran was actually practiced by prophet muhammad sallallahu in the real life so the first source is quran itself then secondly uh, we have a huge uh, treasure of ahadis okay uh, about prophet sallallahu's uh, actions his sayings his uh, uh, injunctions his teachings okay and all the things that uh, prophet sallallahu would do in his life were actually recorded and reported by uh, his companions sahabas okay to the next generation and this way uh, all the record and all uh, the things about prophet sallallahu reached us so this is second source and then we have uh, historical books okay the books of history okay so they are also uh, a great a source of information on prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life okay so this is actually uh, this verse is about uh, making us realize that if we want to follow someone as an ideal as a role mo model in our life so that must be prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam